Now, certainly one week ahead before we all head out to the voting stations, once again, local government elections, we thought we should take a look at the projected outcomes. Now, Brand's Eye looks at how big events are covered by the media and discussed by social media users to predict the likely outcomes. For example, they claim to have predicted the correct Brexit outcome last month when many analysts were predicting that voters would choose to remain in the EU. So Mel Mulhadaba is the head of client engagement at Brands Eye Media Analytics provider. Mel, good morning. Good morning. Thank what's, you for having me. It's a pleasure. So what's so special about your model and your method? <laughs> well, Brands Eye, um, like many other media analytics company, relies on an algorithm to understand people's sentiment towards a certain topic or a brand or, yeah. in this case, political parties. What makes us different, however, is that we don't just rely on those algorithms. We rely on people in the different countries to actually also read through what people are saying on social media and inform the sentiment. So things like sarcasm, um, something that an algorithm will never pick up, actual human intervention will pick up. Um, and we believe that is why we got it right. Is Brands Eye a South African business? Yes, definitely so. We own everything ourselves. We've built all our own platforms and all our algorithms. And yes, our head offices are based in Cape Town. And you operate internationally, though? We do, yes. We definitely support many multinationals with media analytics services. Okay, so looking forward to the local government elections. I've been watching uh, you know, ENCA and some of the predictions they have made. It looks like the Democratic Alliance has been ahead in some of the hotly contested ones. I mean, what is your... Uh, well, 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 your algorithms and your human intervention and analysis, what does that show? Um, it definitely kind of agrees with, with, with what they are saying in terms of the ANC not making headway in most of the contested um, municipalities. If, if, you, if you look at the net sentiment towards all the political parties, the, uh, the ANC has a, a net sentiment of, of negative 24%. Um, but looking at the DA and the EFF, they're both sitting... On the positive side of things, uh, specifically from this week on, the DA is, is moved, has moved to a positive um, sentiment. Um, the EFF ha- has, has quite a positive sentiment as well, but you have to understand that there's a lot more conversation going on around the DA and the ANC that there is around, than there is around the EFF. Hmm. Um, if, if you look specifically at, at some of the contested metros, um, Nelson Mandela Bay, the ANC definitely lagging behind there, um, and the EFF and DA are kind of on the same level. Um, in terms of the sentiment there, in terms of positive sentiment. Mm. Um, Chuane the same. Um, the EFS is coming up tops there, uh, while the ANC is definitely lagging behind. And you would obviously be interested in the city of Cape Town, yes. where um, the ANC is, once again, um, definitely not ahead in positive sentiment, and, and the DA is standing out there. What are the numbers so, uh, attached to the Cape Town sentiment? Do you have... I don't, unfortunately, have specific numbers for you. Um, mm. But having looked in the past, um, the DA conversation um, was definitely on par in terms of volume with the ANC conversation. Mm. The EFF conversation is very low. Um, but, but unlike um, Johannesburg, for instance, where the, the volume of conversations were exactly the same for both ANC and, and DA, where the, the DA definitely stood out here uh, in, mm. in Cape Town with positive sentiment. How do you account for people who are just so sick and tired, they, you know, but they're not on social media, they're not very vocal, um, they probably don't even want to vote, they're so sick and tired. How do you account for that in your record? Well, we try to not account for things that aren't on there. So we definitely in South Africa have the problem that there are many you know, communities that don't have access to, um, to, to social media or to smartphones. Um, on the flip side, though, people who are sick and tired are very vocal about being sick and tired. Um, mm. You know, social media is used as almost a complaint center sometimes. Mm. Um, but I think we had the advantage in, in, for, in Brexit, for instance, that, that there, it is a first world country where people are just on these platforms. And we were definitely able to get it more accurate. Well, um, call, and we're hoping to do the same for the U.S. But SA is just difficult um, uh, with people not being on it. Now, um, one of our listeners called in to say that you had a 50-50 chance of calling the Brexit outcome correctly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we did. But uh, the, the data started showing on the Monday already. And we didn't call it. We, we listened to the data. We actually ah. looked at what the data was saying. So it, it wasn't awesome. us predicting something or saying something. We, so, we relied on what the data was telling us. Sounds like a fascinating business mail. Uh, and I want to thank you very much for the insights this morning. Head of Client Engagement at Brands, I'm Mel Moharpa.